Hey guys, let's have a barbecue. Okay, well, yeah, what are we gonna smoke? Just some crips. All right, y'all, welcome back to the Commodore Arms channel. All right, so real quick, you guys can see I have adjusted the background ever so slightly. So I got a lot of stuff when I was in Finland, mostly this stuff up here. So if you guys gave me a patch, I do appreciate it. Hopefully you guys can, can see it up there. You can see I got the knives over here, the cords, and then also berets and a sign that uh, someone else actually made for me. So yeah, a lot of really cool additions. And yeah, all this stuff over here, you can see a little moomin <laughs> right there, kind of chilling. And yeah, I kind of adjusted everything a little bit, but hopefully you guys appreciate it. Again, that patch wall is getting very full, so I'm probably going to have to get another one and maybe just put it like over here somewhere or something. But today we are doing a reaction video and I gotta say it's been a while since I've done a reaction video. The uploads are gonna be kind of like inconsistent and, and out of order at least. So you guys might be wondering like, okay, the, the reaction video he did previously, he said he was recently going to Finland, but all the other Finland vlogs are already out. So it's not gonna make a whole lot of sense. Now it should make a little bit more sense as far as the chronological order of these videos. But this one should be a good one. This, I don't know, really drew my attention. Now this is titled, Army Rangers Smoked Some Crips in 1989. Now if you guys, if you guys don't know, Crips are a very prominent gang here in the US. I'm not sure if they were more prominent, they're probably more prominent back, back in 1989, but yeah, they're still very prominent. But a gang going against, not just like, you know, active duty or veterans, but army rangers of all people. That is something that is pretty interesting. Now this video has about 10 million views and it was uploaded less than a month ago. So it looks like it's pretty popular. It should be a good one. This is by a YouTube channel called Popo Medic, which I'm not familiar with, but I'll put the original video down in the description so you guys can go check out that channel, but let's do it. Saturday, September 23rd, 1989. Oh, a Saturday too. An army ranger who had just purchased a home on one of Tacoma, Washington's most gang infested streets quickly be Now, if you guys don't know, I live in Washington. So this happens, this location is about 30 minutes away from me, which is kind of interesting. Now Tacoma, it, it, it's mostly okay, but there's a lot of areas that are like pretty questionable. So I can imagine even back in 1989, I don't know if it was worse back then or, or better, but yeah, I can definitely see some things going down there became a witness to various illegal activity happening out front of his home. He wasn't shy of confronting it or notifying the authorities, and mm. soon after, he became the target of one of the most notorious street gangs Washington State has ever seen. Huh. I didn't even and know they were in Washington. shaking up the hornet's nest one too many times, his home was ambushed by the Hilltop Crips gang, but not before he invited 15 of his ranger buddies oh over my gosh. for a barbecue. 300 rounds, and 10 minutes later, the Crips were fighting for their lives. Yeah, no kidding. Damn, 10 minutes? Yeah, it, it unfolded pretty quickly then, huh? I'm liking the music. In 1989, the neighborhood of Ash Street in Tacoma, Washington was an open air drug market. There were several mm. hotspots and almost every house on the block was an active and thriving trap house. These gang infestations in the 1980s, Jeez. born from the crack epidemic, flooded the streets and created an economic downturn that defined the decade. You might remember President Ronald Reagan declaring the war on drugs. Or his first lady who was just like, just say no, oh my God. That, well, that was this time. <laughs> Tacoma was Washington <laughs> State's ground zero of gang activity. And by the summer of 1989, mm. it had grown blatant, middle of the day type shit. Like selling crack to the ice cream man type shit. And this was Jeez. all fueled by an influx of gang members moving in from California. Tacoma police had experienced nothing like it before and were really struggling to get it under control. Oftentimes not even mm. knowing how to respond to it. Ash Street. Now I will say I've been to some pretty like questionable neighborhoods, especially in New Jersey. For whatever reason, New Jersey has a lot of like really weird like little pockets of, you know, kind of shady areas like this. But when things are like openly going down, like them, yeah, just walking up to the, the ice cream man and selling crack to them. I'm not sure if that actually happened, but if it was really this open, I always kind of wonder like how the police can actually approach situations like that. I know like increased patrol is sure, but I'm not sure if it was necessarily getting violent, but when you have that many people, like I, I guess you can really only arrest so many people, so their attention was probably on some of the big dogs, but even still, it must be kind of hard to manage a situation like that when an entire town is pretty much crime-ridden. Neighbors consistently called police and called 911 repeatedly and got nowhere. 
The typical response Jeez. from police at the time was very mild. Community-oriented policing was a new thing, such as taking bullshit calls and pretending like it's not bullshit. Yes, ma'am. I know you can't sleep when the dogs are barking. But community policing was still viewed with suspicion by veteran cops who came up in the 60s and preferred the old ways, like smacking people in the head with their portable radios. At the time, Tacoma Police Chief uh -huh. Ray Faitlin pushed these new community policing programs so far that the Hilltop Crip Gang rose to power. When the OGs from Westwood play HD6, we mounted up Interesting clips in this video, I gotta say. Staff Sergeant like, William Folk of the 2nd Ranger yeah, Battalion, 75th go. Ranger Regiment, purchased his home on Ash Street in hopes that the neighborhood would soon turn around. To protect that investment, he was determined to help push the drugs <laughs> and gangs out by any means necessary. I mean, this is definitely something an, an Army Ranger would do. Like, yeah, I know this area is really crime-ridden, but I can get it for a good price, and I'm not personally too worried about these guys. So I'm going to go ahead and send it like <laughs> that's pretty awesome, <laughs> which may seem crazy to most people. But Staff Sergeant Folk was not most people. He was an elite operator who at a moment's notice could hit hard and smash fucking everything. You know, Hell ranger yeah. shit. But violence was the last thing the Staff Sergeant <laughs> wanted, and he remained optimistic. In the summer of 1989, Folk returned from a December deployment in Panama to find the neighborhood worse than when he left. Along with other neighbors oh, who were honest, hardworking people, he formed a neighborhood group that pressed police demanding action. The mm -hmm. neighbors started making signs, protesting, and taking pictures of the drug dealers. Even as the okay. tension on Ash Street rose, Chief Faitlin made a decision he would later regret. Hamstrung by budget constraints and desperately short on the patrol side, he shifted four of six officers away from the Hilltop Crime Management Team to launch a community policing pilot project. <laughs> the neighbors on Ash Street reacted with dismay. Under fire from citizens, and the city council. A local tribune covered the controversy, noting efforts by Ash Street neighbors to monitor the drug activity themselves. I'm curious, like, sure they can monitor it, sure they can take pictures, but I mean, when you're asking them to do that, you know, if they get caught taking picture pictures of like, you know, a drug dealer doing his thing and they get caught, it's gonna be pretty scary. So I understand like, yeah, policing your own kind of thing, but with something like this and something that's so widespread, I mean, it's kind of hard to be like, hey, you guys, try and hook it up for us. So it's kind of like a you scratch our back, we'll scratch yours. And yeah, it's just, it's not really something you should be asking the, the community to do necessarily. Not when it's like this widespread and this prevalent. So I understand there's constraints, but yeah, probably not the best sort of solution for them to recommend. After the news tribune piece, Jeez. drug traffic on Ash Street slowed, but only so much. Staff Sergeant mm -hmm. Folk was used to seeing more than 100 cars pass through his block on any given day. And after the story appeared, it was down to 20 cars. Folk decided okay. to install a video camera on his upstairs window to record huh. the traffic. He organized a neighborhood barbecue as a show of public unity nice. set for 3 p.m. Saturday, September 23rd. He invited neighbors, friends, ranger buddies, and thought nothing more of it. The day of the barbecue, a group of Hilltop Crip gangbangers acknowledged Folk outside of his residence uh -oh. and gave him the gun finger. It came from a car full of Crips. Driving by his house, the index finger pointed, thumb up, a little flip of the hand, and the okay. mouth words, boom, boom. Hey, I mean, that's a challenge if, if I've ever seen one, especially for a ranger. Oh. How the come I didn't know that? The video camera on Folk's house, and a few hours later, they returned and threw rocks at it. Someone else took the shots at the house and the video camera with a BB gun. Folk and a few Ranger buddies then walked across the street to confront the out of shape, chain smoking gangbangers who think they're hard. Folk told them to stop throwing yeah, we did at his dirty. Home and the neighbors' homes <laughs> to stop shooting BBs and to instead turn their lives around and find better ways. The gangbangers warned him to take the camera out of his window. The gangbangers suggested the staff sergeant <laughs> didn't know who he was dealing with. The staff sergeant okay. suggested the gangbangers didn't know who they were dealing with. <laughs> I think that, that second told one's probably more history, accurate. Bitch, and told him they were gonna burn his house down and light him up as soon as the sun goes down. Folk decided to walk away, and before he returned to his home, he overheard one of the crypts stating, I'm gonna shoot that army son of a bitch. 
Folk then walked inside his house. He picked up his telephone, called some more of his ranger buddies oh, hell from the 2nd yeah. Ranger Battalion, and invited them over for a barbecue, suggesting it wouldn't Come on over. Come <laughs> Translation, bring your own bullets. Hey, guys, let's have a barbecue. Okay, well, yeah, what are we going to smoke? Just some crips. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> this is a great channel. I gotta say. Including the few rangers who were already at the barbecue and the rangers called, the total of rangers grew to 15. Folk told them to bring Damn. personal weapons and whatever else they had. <laughs> they came armed to the teeth with handguns, shotguns, and rifles. Folk was armed with a Browning 9mm and oh. a Colt Python 357 Magnum. Fucking nice. Magnum. Who's who's the gangster now, bitch? Over a couple beers, Folk pitched to his buddies a defensive operation of his home. Stake out locations and wait. No first moves. If police come, disarm immediately, cooperate, and mm. assist. And all of his buddies joyfully agreed and were fucking down. They thought maybe <laughs> nothing will happen, yeah. but if it does, Zero tolerance for dudes shooting gats and smoking Swisher Sweets. As the sun went down, the rangers dispersed into Swisher their defensive sweets. positions, alert and observant of any and all activity inside and outside the perimeter of the house. A few all hours right. had passed as the rangers held their positions. One ranger observed a vehicle approaching in the distance at a slow rate of speed, at which point the vehicle shut off its headlights. Folk, with his magnum in hand, returned <laughs> the favor and turned out the lights in his house and in the yard. Oh, At 9.20 p.m., as the vehicle approached, someone within the vehicle fired a shot into the air. The house was now taking fire from the rear, where, according to police reports, small-caliber automatic gunfire was heard. The Jeez. rangers opened a shit ton of fire, <laughs> but so did the Hilltop Crips. Okay. One of the rangers, William Edwards, was posted on the front porch. When the shooting started, he hit the ground as a bullet slammed into the wall beside him. He and other rangers returned fire, seeing figures running amongst parked cars on the other side of the street. Ranger Russell Nolte. Now I'm wondering if we're gonna see any of the clips from his camera. I know we saw some clips, but I'm not exactly sure if that was actually from his particular camera setup, but that would be pretty freaking interesting. I, I imagine they definitely confiscated you know, that for evidence or what have you. But yeah, I wonder if we'll get to see any of that or if there's any of that online. Posted in the backyard, crawled forward, as a shot hit the back of the house three feet over his head. <laughs> Ranger Burr Settles was posted upstairs by the infamous controversial fucking video camera as a shot came through the window. <laughs> the bullet grazed his yeah. head and he received multiple lacerations on his face from the shattered glass. <laughs> Numerous muzzle flashes were now seen from the east. There were at least 16 shooters in three different locations. Jeez. The Rangers again returned fire while outside the assailants took cover amongst the parked cars, shooting over their shoulders ducking down, shooting blindly. You know, stupid shit like that, like gangsters do. At this time, a <laughs> neighbor taking very cover effective. on her kitchen floor dialed 911. And just like the famous Wild West shootout at the OK Corral, it was over in minutes. 10 minutes, to be exact. The first Ten police minutes. car came down the middle of the street, cherries and berries on, with his siren blaring. <laughs> The rangers dropped their weapons, but as that first patrol car arrived on scene, one of the Hilltop Crip gang members popped a round off, sending the patrol car reversing out of the scene so quickly, smoke was seen Damn, coming really? from the rear tires. <laughs> Officers in the car reported hearing 50 to 60 shots in less than one minute. Shortly Jeez. after, more cops pulled into the block and the gangbangers ran. Huh. So right now we're not seeing any sort of casualties. I mean, it was 10 minutes, but you can imagine a lot can go down in, in 10 minutes for sure. And this is probably pretty close quarters kind of stuff. And they're posted up inside the house. So they could probably get, and, and of course they're rangers, they can probably get some pretty accurate shots on these guys, even if they are taking cover behind the cars. But yeah, so they, they call the police maybe like what, halfway through or something. And then, I mean, the police, yeah, they backed out at first but now they're actually coming for us which is kind of cool and what is this okay then police weren't messing around either this music is great <laughs> fits the time period too i guess Right. The unarmed staff sergeant walked out the back door to his driveway and the alley behind his house. He felt someone behind and didn't fight. A hand shoved his head down and a voice ordered him to the ground. 
One gang member by the name of Frankie Strickland was cornered by a police cane and found to be in possession of 16 rounds of 9mm. Hmm. He said he was holding them for a friend, but couldn't remember the friend's name. You know, like a fucking liar. He also I'm said the same them? thing about the pistol he was carrying. It was for, it was for a friend. Another suspect was carrying uh. copper-headed rounds for a gas gun. Once the situation was under control and the officers what? learned about the Rangers' defensive operation, the responding sergeant of the Tacoma Police Department wasn't too happy about it. He lectured Folk and the other Rangers for not calling the police for assistance until shots were fired. Hmm. Now, I'm sure the police know these guys could probably hold their own, so they probably weren't too concerned about that. But, you know, they probably also understand that these guys wanted to draw it out a little bit before they actually got the police involved. And felt that the situation may have been avoided by calling 911 prior to the shooting getting started. Out of what was quite possibly mm. a 35 man gunfight with over 300 rounds shot in the dark, no one was reported to be killed or injured. For reported. 20 years, the official version of the shootout held that miraculously no one was hurt, but there are rumors injured gang members did not seek medical attention for obvious reasons, and some may have even been mortally wounded. And according to Folk himself, during the firefight, one gang member rushed towards Folk's house. I guess he thought he was gonna John Wayne it. <laughs> one of the Rangers took aim okay. and hit the gangster in the shoulder. The attacker staggered back and ran away. The hmm. moment goes unmentioned in police reports and witness accounts of the time. Unverified gossip holds that the wounded man was treated at a Seattle area hospital over an hour away Dang, from Tacoma. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Doug Sutherland, who was mayor at the time, pondered a declaration of a citywide version of martial law to combat the gang violence that immediately drew national attention. The Damn. city of Tacoma found the dollars to add more police officers to their department. Then Governor oh, yeah. Booth Gardner even considered sending in the National Guard to Ash Street. <laughs> The Damn, Hilltop Crick bad. gang member who was arrested and found in possession of the 9 mil and the pistol, Frankie Strickland, was the only man charged in connection with the shootout. He was Damn. convicted of second degree assault and was later sentenced to 22 months in prison. Bruh. The military <laughs> yes. considered the incident a matter of self-defense <laughs> for the off-duty rangers. Oh On February 9th, 2010, Tacoma police <laughs> and FBI launched a major crackdown on the Hilltop Crip gang okay. and charged 32 members with up to 50 crimes, everything from theft to attempted murder and drug sales. Damn. A few years back, a Tacoma police officer said something about the shootout. He said it was the single most important incident in Tacoma that caused a change in police policies and practices. Wait, who said that? It looks like it says folk. Wasn't that the, the Army Ranger? Are they just completely unrelated? I'm kind of confused now. Yeah, it's definitely the same name. Okay, hold on. I'm confused now. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. He's a few years back, a Tacoma police officer said something about the shootout. He said it was the single most important incident in Tacoma okay. that caused anyway. a change in police policies and practices. Staff Sergeant William Folk never moved away from Ash Street. And as he predicted, yeah. he was never promoted and left the army in 1993. <laughs> he still owns the property to this day. Hey guys, nice. if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that Hell subscribe yeah. button. There's a lot more of these historical crime breakdowns in the works and you don't wanna miss them. So be sure- Yeah, I will put the original video in the, in the description so you guys can check it out. Definitely go and check it out. Now I'm kind of wondering if his property value went up. I mean, I imagine it was pretty low at that point. So it's probably looking pretty good, especially here in Washington state, all the prices are going up. So. I think he definitely got a return on that, on that investment. <laughs> Even some excitement out of it. But this is a really, really fascinating story. And again, this is why I love these random videos on YouTube because they really cast the highlights on things. I mean, this is in Tacoma, literally 30 minutes away from me. And it's involving army rangers and crypts. It's like, it's such a weird combination. And, and I'm kind of surprised that I haven't heard about it previously. But again, it's awesome that these YouTube channels can actually highlight these sort of events because yeah, it's really fascinating. And we can see people are very interested in, in hearing this story, just judging by the view count here. But let me know what you guys think. Again, this is a pretty unique situation. I would love to see if you guys have any other sort of events that happened like this as far as like military versus sort of gang related stuff. It's pretty interesting. I mean, it's not stuff that you see too often. It's kind of like a, a Grand Torino kind of thing. But again, the quality of the video itself and just the clips and the music and the joke, I mean, you throw in a bra and you already kind of won me over in that one. It was just fantastic. So definitely go and send some love to this channel. Yeah, really, really cool stuff. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed it. Thank you again for the awesome recommendations. And again, if you have anything similar to this, 
definitely throw down in the comment section or head over to the Discord and recommend it there. But I do appreciate it, and I hope you guys are excited for more reaction videos because, yeah, I'm, I'm back in, in Washington for a bit now, so I'll be reacting to a lot more cool stuff, and I definitely have a good backlog of videos that I can check out. So stay tuned. Thank you guys for watching. That is it for this video. I'll see you all in the next one.